Hey, it's Lisa, registered dietitian with Healthline, and welcome to the battle of the proteins. We've got tofu versus ground beef, tempeh versus salmon, chickpeas versus chicken. Who's gonna come out on top? Stick around to find out. I'm sure we're gonna make someone mad, whether it's the carnivores or the vegans. But today, we'll be talking about the benefits and downsides to choosing both plant or animal proteins and tell you what you need to know about which types of protein to include in your diet. Now when it comes to animal proteins, which foods are we talking about? Things like red meat, chicken, pork, fish and seafood, even proteins like eggs and dairy products like cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, regular cheese, even milk. Those are gonna be considered your animal-based protein food. When it comes to plant-based protein, it's everything that comes from a plant. So some protein-rich plant options are things that are made from soy, whether that's tofu or tempeh or edamame. You've also got nuts and seeds seeds, which contain some fat and protein. Whole grains have some protein in them. Really anything that comes from a plant is gonna go into that plant-based protein category. And anything that comes from an animal, whether it's the muscle tissue itself, like when you eat meat or fish, or eggs and milk are considered animal proteins. One of the biggest difference between these protein foods, despite where they come from, is their amino acid profile. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. We eat protein, we break it down into amino acids in our body, we absorb those, and then we start to build them back up. Animal protein foods are a great source of amino acids. They tend to have a really complete and robust amino acid profile, meaning they contain all nine essential amino acids in high enough volumes that our body needs. There's about 20 amino acids acids in total, nine of those we need to eat. Plant-based proteins tend to be lower in at least one essential amino acid, meaning you would need to eat more different types of plant proteins to get that complete protein profile that you're looking for. They are missing what's called a limiting amino acid. So as your body starts to rebuild these amino acids into proteins, if it's missing a crucial one, it can't keep going, hence it is limited until it has it. We used to think that maybe vegetarians needed to work really hard at pairing those incomplete proteins together at meals, but what we now know is that as long as you're eating a variety of protein foods throughout the day, most people don't need to worry about the amino acid profile of their specific foods. So yes, animal proteins definitely have more and a more robust amino acid profile, but as long as you're consuming a variety of plant-based proteins, you're gonna get what you need. Beyond just including more protein in your diet, including more forms of plant-based protein has shown to be beneficial for your overall health. So people that choose more plant-based foods tend to have healthier hearts, they tend to get more fiber in their diet, and they tend to have a lower risk of other types of diseases. So again, eating more plants while they may be a little bit lower in protein have been linked in the research time and time again with better outcomes for your overall health. There's also benefits to including animal protein-rich foods in your diet as well. People who consume an omnivorous diet that is a mix of animals and plants are less likely to lose muscle mass and have an easier time keeping muscle on. It's not just about the protein. Strength training is important too, but it's likely because those animal protein foods just have a higher volume of protein in them and it's easier to get enough. Animal foods also contain certain nutrients that are harder to get on a plant-based diet. So not impossible, but seafood and fish have omega-3s, which are great for your brain, your heart, they're anti-inflammatory, and they're a wonderful source of them. Again, you can get those in plant-based foods. It's just a little trickier. Red meat is a great source of iron and other minerals and vitamins that you can achieve on a plant-based diet, it's just harder. So there are a benefit to including those animal foods in your diet beyond just the amount of protein that they give you. The downsides to plant-based proteins tend to be that eating more plant-based protein is typically coupled with a carbohydrate. So beans are a wonderful source of protein, but they also contain carbs. Whole grains contribute protein to your diet, but again, they also contain carbs. So if you're monitoring the number of carbohydrates you eat, whether that's because you have diabetes or you prefer to eat a lower or more moderate carbohydrate diet, it can be tricky to get all the protein you want from plants. There are definitely plant-based protein options that fit the bill like tofu, edamame, seitan, and especially as you start getting into those fake and processed meats, you can absolutely find protein-rich plant options that don't come packaged with carbohydrates, but in general, you wanna stick to the less processed choices as much as possible, and just make sure you're being mindful of upping your protein intake likely means also upping your carbohydrate intake. 
There are also downsides to including animal protein in your diet. Studies have linked overconsumption of processed meat and even red meat to worse health outcomes, including things like risk of heart disease, stroke, and even certain types of cancer. So choosing lean meats, choosing red meat less often, and making sure we're not choosing as much ultra processed or processed meat. So things like sausage, salami, even cold cuts and bacon would fall into that category. You can still absolutely include meat as part of a healthy diet. You just wanna be mindful of the types of meat that you're choosing. Animal proteins also just tend to be a little bit more expensive. You can absolutely make more economical purchases, whether you're looking to buy meat when it's on sale and freezing it in portions that you can take out and thaw when you're ready to make a meal. What I want you to remember when it comes to protein is that we can get so laser focused on one nutrient that we tend to forget about the other things on our plate. So protein is important and eating a high protein diet can help you stay satisfied, meet your muscle building goals, help reduce the loss of muscle mass in your body. Protein plays a role in a lot of things, but the other foods on your plate are important too. So I've seen people eat nothing but chicken because it's high in protein or just a bowl of ground beef because it's high in protein. What I'd love to see you do is pair those foods with some vegetables, some complex carbohydrates that are rich in fiber so that you're getting a variety of nutrients and foods into your diet and not just one type of nutrient. We're seeing right now too, because protein is so popular, we've already passed the low fat craze of the 90s and the low carb craze of the early 2000s. Protein is getting added to a lot of ultra processed foods. And while additional protein in certain snack type foods can help you stabilize your blood sugars and feel more satisfied compared to eating just something that's a simple carbohydrate, we still wanna choose whole foods more often as part of our diet. So skip the ultra processed foods that have a little bit of protein added. Make sure you're balancing out your plate with a healthy protein, but also some other foods. So add some whole grains, add some vegetables, add some fruit, really balance out the plate overall, which is gonna help you have tastier meals and also get more nutrition and more variety into your diet. All right, so who's the winner in this battle? If we're looking at just protein, I'd have to put animal foods on top. They not only deliver a complete amino acid profile, but they also tend to be higher in protein, so it's easier to meet your protein goals when you focus on animal protein foods. However, if we zoom out and look at the big picture, I absolutely think you should incorporate different types of plant-based proteins into your diet, whether that's snacking on pistachios or making sure you're incorporating quinoa into a dinner once a week. Don't forget about plant-based proteins because they have a lot of other benefits to them besides just delivering protein. And when you consume a variety of them, you're gonna get that full amino acid profile. Now, I know people have really strong feelings about protein. Some people don't want to include animal foods in their diet. Some people really, really love meat and you should choose whichever option works best for you. From a health standpoint, what I wanna see you do is make sure you're incorporating a variety of foods every time and taking the focus off of just the proteins on your plate. Let us know what other questions you have about protein in the comments down below or what other food head-to-head -head battle you'd like to see. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more from me and Healthline.